Eating right for your blood type. It sounds like the perfect miracle setup where you're eating the specific foods based on what your individual blood type is. Let's break it down and then talk about whether or not it's something you should do. And you're going to want to stick with me through the end of this video because I'm going to explain some interesting research. But first off, what separates your blood types? Okay, we have type O, we have type A, we have type B, and we have type AB. Simply put, all that is different between them is the levels and presence of different antigens, which means that you have different kind of immune systems based on that blood. It's really just important when it comes down to a transfusion. If you were ever to get really sick or ever have a major injury that required you to have a transfusion, you wouldn't want to have the wrong kind of blood transfused because simply put, your body would start to attack its own blood. The antigens are going to dictate what you're sensitive to, what you're not sensitive to, and how your immune system works. So when we look at it from a diet perspective and what Dr. Diadamo was looking at when he wrote the book, Eat Right for Your Blood Type, it makes a lot of sense. We want to avoid foods that certain antigens are going to be sensitive to and vice versa. So when we look at the types, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, type O for example. It was said that type O needed a high protein diet. A lot of time this had to do with sensitivities in the stomach. It was found that a lot of fiber and things like that weren't good for a type O. Then we had to look at type A. Type A was more towards a meat-free diet, thinking that the blood lacked some of the proteins and lacked some of the antigens that would allow the body to metabolize meat in a good way. Then we look at type B. Type B was focused more on poultry and white meat and high cruciferous veggies. Again, relaying back to the antibody and antigen level of the blood. Then we look at type AB. You see, type AB was thought to have lower levels of stomach acid, so easier foods to digest. The proteins were generally coming from fish and from easy to consume legumes and veggies like that. But I wanna talk about this blood type diet, and I wanna talk about whether or not it's really something for you. Okay, when it comes down to the research, it was a little bit alarming. You see, whenever there's a research study, we look at something that's called PICO, sort of the PICO. What that means is population, intervention, comparison and outcome. So simply put, the population, what group of people are you using? Okay, the intervention, what are you actually introducing to this population? The comparison, what are you comparing it to? And the outcome, what is the overall outcome of the study? Well, these PICO studies that looked at the blood type diets were pretty eye-opening. There was one study in particular that took 1,500 participants. Okay, they had them eat the specific blood type diets and they didn't actually take a look at their blood type until the end of the protocol. Now what was found was alarming. It wasn't so much the individual's blood type, more so it was the test subject's diet type that they actually stuck to. For example, the type A diet ended up having the best instance of a lowered BMI, meaning it had the best result when it came to lowering body weight, lowering that waist to hip ratio, and reducing cholesterol overall. But a lot of it makes sense. You were reducing some of the trans fats, you were reducing some of the saturated fats. A lot of it just makes sense. So in whole, when we look at the blood type diet, we can see a direct connection between the foods that are being consumed and the biomarkers and the actual lab tests within the subjects themselves. Each one of those respective blood type diets has their own benefits and their own cons. But all in all, a lot of them are going to reduce BMI simply because they're much more balanced. So in essence, do you need to follow a blood type diet? Well, the truth is, any one of the blood type diets is probably going to be beneficial for you. But I think what we really wanna start looking at is our levels of inflammation and how we respond to specific foods individually. Because it is so much more than just our blood type. Because right now we have so many different environmental factors, so many different factors from the GMO foods we're eating, different things that we're consuming, different things that we're exposed to, that our levels of antibodies and antigens are all over the place in the first place. So you could have someone that's a type A blood type that has sensitivities to what would normally be the type AB foods. Okay, so at the end of the day, you have to monitor what works best for you. You have to look at your biomarkers. But if you wanna find a good starting place, the blood type diet is not a bad place to start because it does give you a framework and it does give you some research that is at least outlined to get you down the path so you can at least consume a diet that works for you. But either way, it's good to know your blood type so in case you ever have an emergency where you need a transfusion, you're not gonna end up immunosuppressed and fighting off your own immune system. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos and learn your body and learn what works for you by staying here on the channel. And let me know in the comment section below if there's any specific videos that you're interested in seeing or any questions that you'd like me to answer when I do an upcoming video.
See you soon.